Thanks so much, and, and thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to give these updates. Um, I'm also served for the last few years as a, a co-chair of the FES committee, so just wanted to kind of go through um, a little bit about the evolution of FES and, and what's happened um, in the last few years. Okay, there we go. Um, this is a, my disclosure is not uh, relevant to this talk. So I wanted to um, discuss a little bit about the, um, the history and, and kind of timeline of implementation of FES, um, <laughs> give some updates on, on how uh, FES has evolved um, during the years that it's been implemented, um, and then, uh, you know, especially relevant to the last few years, how uh, FES and, and the program and testing have uh, adapted to, to COVID pandemic. So, um, you know, the origins of FES was really born out of the success of the, the fundal fundamentals of, of laparoscopic uh, surgery um, uh, program. Um, and it underwent a, a similar, you know, really extensive development and, and rigorous validation process uh, led by uh, Drs. Vasilio, Marx, and, and others. Um, you know, this is a, a tremendous amount of a body of work because um, really created from scratch were all the didactic materials um, for FES, um, and then the test, uh, as we heard previously, consists of a, a multiple ch uh, choice a knowledge uh, component and then a hands-on technical component, uh, both of which had to be generated uh, completely de novo. So that, that was, you know, years and years, uh, hours and hours of, of work, both to generate the test and then uh, validate the, um, uh, the results of the test. So um, there were multiple platforms, um, both uh, kind of physical, mechanical models, um, number of um, virtual reality models, and, and finally landed on a, a virtual reality simulator platform, uh, as you saw, to um, do the, uh, the technical component. Um, and kind of just to take a step back, um, you know, when I, I talk to people outside of medicine, you know, I, I was talking to my wife, as always, who's, who's not a, uh, in medicine about this, and, um, you know, she was shocked to hear that there was really no assessment of surgeons' technical skills uh, before FLS and, and FES for, you know, over 100 years. <laughs> She's like, yeah, really? How could that possibly be? Um, and so this is, you know, really when you take a step back and look at a, a huge kind of, I would say, first step forward um, in, in kind of uh, the uh, assessment of technical skills and, and competency-based assessment of surgeons um, in the United States and, and across the world. So um, testing began in, in 2012, it's uh, been now a decade, and, um, and then you can see as um, the, uh, the ABS mandated um, uh, FES certification as a requirement to sit for the uh, oral boards in the 2017-18 academic year, uh, there was a dramatic uh, increase in, in testing, um, and now it's kind of hit a, a steady state at a, a, around 1,800 uh, tests per year, so uh, a huge number of, of tests every year. Um, these are the test centers. Um, uh, around the United States, and the, there are a couple um, worldwide as well. Um, there's 79 in the United States, and um, these are centers that uh, mostly have residency programs that have applied uh, to be test centers, uh, requires having the, the simulator to administer the, um, the technical component of the exam, and then have a trained uh, proctor um, on site who's available to administer the exam. So you, you can see there's pretty good uh, geographic distribution, but obviously there are less test centers than there are uh, residency programs in the United States. Um, many residency programs that are not test centers are in close proximity uh, to test centers, but there are some that, that are uh, somewhat geographically removed and, and their residents um, would have had to uh, travel um, uh, to take the test. Um, so in terms of updates, um, the, the one large piece of work that, that's kind of been ongoing uh, uh, since the initiation of, of FES was um, updating the didactic material. And uh, this consists of uh, completely revising uh, uh, every module. And, and you can see the, the modules here, you know, ranging from <laughs> patient preparation and uh, sedation and anesthesia um, all the way to, um, uh, you know, tissue removal, ERCP, advanced imaging. So really uh, the whole uh, spectrum of, um, of endoscopy. Um, and, you know, when you work on these things, 
you, you think, um, oh, well, not so much has changed probably since we first did this, and then and you start diving in, and you realize how rapidly, you know, clinic, clinical practice, evidence, uh, clinical recommendations, society recommendation statements, you know, how rapidly really they're evolving. Um, so, you know, it's really important to, to update this content and, and make sure that, um, you know, the test takers are, are really uh, uh, learning the kind of cutting edge um, clinical information. Um, and then a big push um, with the FES uh, 2.0 was to include a, a lot more um, video, photo, but uh, especially video content. Um, you know, a lot of these, uh, especially kind of pathologies, procedures, uh, a little bit difficult to, to get a sense of, of what's going on and what the pathology looks like from just a still uh, photo, as you know, everyone knows. So um, there was a big, big effort to um, acquire, um, you know, a library of, of basically video of endoscopy and incorporate that into the module. So uh, that's been live now, and um, you know, I think a, a huge body of effort uh, over the last uh, several years. Um, and then the, the test itself, especially the multiple choice questions, have kind of gone through a continuous cycle of uh, evaluation of the, the performance um, test characteristics of, of questions and, and kind of modifying, replacing questions um, uh, that uh, either clinical information, clinical practice has changed, um, or the, the, the performance of those items w was not uh, as, as good as we wanted. So that, that was kind of an iterative, um, uh, constant process of, of updating the, the multiple choice tests. Um, and then obviously there was a you know, huge um, uh, barrier to testing um, uh, with COVID. So basically at the be beginning of the pandemic, um, you know, according to, to local quarantine, local reg regulations of the test centers, uh, testing was uh, pretty much completely suspended for several months um, in 2020. Um, and um, so in response to that, you know, many of the, the chief residents who have been sitting for the, um, the written boards had not yet taken um, uh, FES uh, exam. So the, the ABS um, <laughs> temporarily lifted the requirement um, for passing um, FES um, to sit for the, the board exam. Um, and uh, that was kind of transitioned to, um, you know, a requirement uh, for certification, but uh, it could be taken, you know, later in that year or the, the years uh, following as uh, um, they were seeing for the written board. So uh, kind of delayed um, uh, in that requirement. Um, but pretty much now everything, you know, things have, have returned to the, the normal cycle um, and, you know, residents are taking the exam prior to seeing for the written boards. Um, but something that SAGE is uh, in, in conjunction with the ABS started working on um, uh, as the pandemic was kind of unfolding, um, could we kind of have a, a temporary or quote unquote remote test option that would make it easier for uh, residency programs that were not uh, FES test centers uh, to have their residents uh, take the test? Because you know, obviously, there's a lot of restrictions in going to other centers, even having to to go out of uh, out of town or out of state um, to take the test. So, the the temporary testing center option was uh, launched in October of 2020. Um, basically, this, this was for programs that um, uh, had residents who needed to take the test, um, but were not uh, FES test centers themselves. Um, so what it consisted of was renting a portable uh, version of the, the simulator um, that would then uh, ship to the, the residency uh, center, um, and then training of a temporary proctor, either a faculty or you know, lab administrator at, um, uh, at the site uh, to serve as a temporary proctor. So the idea was that um, uh, residency programs would kind of um, organize a week or a week long testing um, for all of the residents in their program and sometimes um, multiple programs in the same city kind of uh, uh, banded together to do this um, to test all their, their residents in, in conjunction. So uh, 21 programs um, used this um, temporary testing option in, in 2021 you know, considering there's only 79 test centers, you know, that's a pretty significant block. And uh, we've received excellent um, feedback from, from the programs who used it. They really like that option. Um, I think it kind of focuses the attention of, of the residents that they need to be prepared because this is, you know, coming up and, and they're all gonna be tested together. So um, we've gotten great feedback um, from that. And the plan is to continue to use this as an option, you know, um, hopefully, 
COVID going forward <laughs> we'll see will not be as huge of a uh, impacting factor but this is a really good option for uh, centers that were not permanent um, FES uh, test centers so uh, in summary um, you know I think um, that, that FLS and FES are just you know really um, uh, crucial steps and you know kind of as we evolve um, you know education assessment towards um, more competency based assessment and especially the from the technical side uh, you know something that's just really nascent in um, in surgical education and evaluation um, and you know one thing that this has given me appreciation of kind of working on on FES is just the the speed at which uh, endoscopy is evolving. Um, so obviously, you know, if you're going to be testing endoscopy uh, skills and knowledge, um, you know, that has to evolve. Um, you know, concomitant with it. Um, and I, I think you know, Sages has, and the committee have done a great job trying to uh, uh, evolve along with clinical practice. Um, and then obviously, you know, during COVID, there were you know really great challenges. Um, that, that were overcome in, in terms of getting all the residents tested. You know, you saw in that graph, there was a little dip uh, in one year, but now we've kind of bounced back to the, you know, testing 1,800 um, uh, trainees a year, which is, is quite impressive, I think. Um, uh, and there's been this kind of silver lining, if you want to say, um, from, from the SVS standpoint of COVID with the implementation of uh, temporary test sites, uh, which I think will make it a lot easier for programs, especially kind of maybe more, um, uh, uh, programs that are not geographically close to uh, permanent test centers. Thanks very much.